when was a time someone that you didn't like had your back? I was undiagnosed with bipolar disorder for about 15 years. In the course of that time, I spent a few years working badly for Walmart. We had one manager who had transferred in some months beforehand who was an angry, picky, detail-oriented bitch, where nothing would please her. Anyway, I wind up having a suicidal depressive crash and straight up no called, no showed work for about 3 weeks straight. Walmart's policy at the time was to go through a 2 or 3 step process before firing someone. I was on the second to last step. It was called a decision day, essentially. They wrote you up, and you had to write a couple paragraphs on how you were going to decide to stay with the company, and how you were going to fix the problem. Up to that time, I had spent about 10 or 11 years completely ducking up my life, explaining away my erratic and strange behaviors, because I didn't have the perspective to understand that I was seriously mentally ill at the time. I was so weary from trying to explain away all of those erratic behaviors, that I just didn't have the energy to do it again. So I wrote exactly what occurred. I saw a little boy hug a plastic Santa, and he had this warm, beautiful, pure smile on his face, and it caused my brain to churn out all of these emotions about my own son who lived on the other side of the country, who I rarely got to see, and couldn't keep my life together worth a shit to actually be a dad for. It crashed me into a suicidal depression and all I could do for most of that three weeks was sleep, stare at the wall, or sob as I couldn't stop thinking about just sucking off a shotgun and being done with the shit. And at the end, where I was asked what I was going to do to change it, I simply wrote I don't know. Manager comes in, stone faced and angry as usual. She reads it. Demeanor completely melts away. She starts crying. The reason she had transferred to our store was her husband had ran off with a 20 year old and left her with their kids and it spun her into suicidal depression as well. She had transferred stores to try and make a new start with a new change of scenery and had was having a rough time adjusting. She helped me find resources, went to bat for me with the store manager and always took additional time to find out how I was doing. I'd like to say, that was the point I started getting things turned around. But I was still too unstable and ignorant to really make the most of the resources that were made available to me at the time. I continued cruising through insanity for a couple more years, before I finally hit rock bottom for the final time, and started to get my life turned around. That whole situation taught me a very important lesson though. There are a lot of angry, bitter people in the world but many of them have a very good reason for being that way. I do my best to not be judgmental and treat everyone with kindness. Even when they are difficult or unkind towards me the exception being physicality. It's always amused me how so many people equate treating other people with kindness and understanding to being a pacifist. I digress. Here's to ya, Joyce. I hope life has gotten better for you, wherever you may be now. When I worked for the US Forest Service, I lived with my crew in a dormitory, barracks really just a single wide trailer parked on the USFS compound in a small town out west. One day, a law enforcement officer decided to host a training exercise on the compound. He invited his staff, the county sheriff's department, and their canine feats. Of course the dogs immediately hit on my barracks. Crews had been smoking reefer in there every day since 1972. That trailer smelled like Bob Moller's asshole. Now, I'd never much cared for the Leo. He dressed like Rambo, wore his pistol inside the office, and had always seemed a little cold towards the hippies that worked on the district most, of whom were on my crew were alright guys. But he did my crew a solid when the county sheriff offered to call the county judge get a warrant for the barracks that afternoon. The Leo insisted that they had to go through federal channels to search federal property. So he called up the Orsa and left a voice a mail, which, of course, was never returned. The US Attorney's Office doesn't have much enthusiasm for cases that don't involve terrorism, money laundering, or human trafficking. Searching some podunk trailer to bust a couple seasonal employees simply isn't on their agenda. We never talked about it, but I'm sure the Leo knew he was squashing the whole thing when he made it a federal case line to get into a club. We were dumb teens and there was a group that, for likely idiotic reasons, we wanted to fight. 
so like idiots we started talking ourselves up about it. I'm gonna kick his ass we've got those mother duckers and other dumb stuff. So the guys near us in line hear us am. Also being dumb teens. Chimed in yo you're gonna fight. We got your back. Point them out. Then the guys in front have our back. Then people are coming from all parts of the line. Hearing there's gonna be a fight. And wondering and now they've all got our dumb backs. Finally the idiots we wanted to fight came up to us. Mind you most of us have never met before. Yo you the guys getting into a fight tonight. We've got your backs. Oh. Okay. Cool. No fight because we were pleasantly surprised that they'd have our backs. There was a train. To get from the college I went to into the city. After taking the train a few times I notice that I never got asked for my ticket and decide to skip buying one the next time. Mistake. This time a conductor asks for the ticket I don't have and I try to pretend to check for one saying I must have lost it. Well. She's too smart for this calls BS and informs me that she has to contact the police. I panic and get angry demanding she give me more time to find my ticket. She turns her back and these brothers, one of which I knew and didn't like at all slips me his ticket. When I produce a ticket for her, she notices their proximity and checks all of this. They slip their tickets behind their backs to one another as she checks so that it seems they each have one. The ducking collar popping. Loud music playing. Tank top wearing bros had my back. Bros can be ducking bros. There was this dude I went to school with for a long time. He was the type of person that would always bullshit everyone about stupid stuff that most people knew wasn't true. This made him mostly UN liked. I never really had a big problem with him, but I didn't love the guy. There were two separate occasions where I did or said something that would have gotten me in trouble and for some reason. When the teacher asked who did said this, he took the blame. For no reason. I'll never understand why, but man I appreciate that. We are friends on FB and he's got a fiance and his own landscaping business. I'm really happy for him. This was in my PhD program. Enter Megan. I hated Megan. Most people hated Megan. She was loud, obnoxious, talked shit about people behind their backs, and was the kind of person where, if you complained at a party about how you had issues with a certain professor she'd go running to that prof to tell them you said that. One time I did a movie event for the department and showed Hitchcock's Notorious. Megan showed up and announced at the beginning that she loves to heckle movies and spent the entire screening ridiculing the film. And since Megan was a major figure in the program she took on every extra responsibility a grad student was allowed and had a hand in everything. It was impossible to avoid her and, since we were in the same area, I regularly had to have classes with her. Enter Jennifer I hated Jennifer even more than Megan. Everyone hated Jennifer, including Megan. Jennifer was in her 40s and switching careers into teaching, but because she was older than most of the grad students she believed she was wiser than all of us and never hesitated to talk down to us. Lord her sense of self entitlement over us and treat anyone who disagreed with her for any reason like they were an idiot. She was a non-traditional grad student, meaning she only took classes but wasn't a tar, so I didn't have to deal with her very often, but I did have her in some of my classes. Enter Harry. Harry was one of the first people I met in the program and I had known him for a while. Harry is awesome. He was a retired lawyer who decided to get an MA so he could teach some even in college classes in his free time to keep himself busy. I had many classes with Harry and always liked him. I only ever had one class with all three of them together though. During a discussion I mentioned how I hated the law field then nodded to Harry and said with all due respect to the lawyer in the room. Jennifer then shouted at me, you know I used to be a lawyer right? I did not know this. With how much she loved to rub her wisdom and experience in our faces it had somehow never come up. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't know that. Oh because women can't be lawyers. She shouted at me. Before I could even open my mouth Megan lost her shit. She screamed at Jennifer for 2 minutes about how I'm not a sexist and it was horrible of her to even dare suggest it and anyone who calls herself a feminist would never throw out an accusation like that. It honestly made it that much sweeter when 
in the silence that fell after her and I then got to say to Jennifer Rowe, and by the way I used to work at a law firm where three of the four partners were women, and where women significantly outnumbered men on the staff. So I actually do know that women can be lawyers, because I used to work for female lawyers. After class Megan said to me, don't worry Sknit, if you were a sexist I'd tell you. I'm sure you would have. Megan. I'm sure you would have. More like somebody who didn't like me, but hopefully it still counts. I'm a teacher who works with high school age special needs students who are emotionally behaviorally challenged. Last year in my first year of teaching, there was a girl in my classes who would straight up tell me she hated me every day. Not unusual for the population I work with, but I just had a hard time breaking down that wall and getting her to stay in my room, or any room for that matter. A student transferred into our program a few months into the year, and right off I got a bad feeling about him. Nobody could figure out where he went to school prior to transferring in. He was almost 18 with no high school credit. He got in trouble for touching girls and saying things that made him uncomfortable and often ask me really personal questions. I have kids who say things for a shock factor, to get a rise out of you, for entertainment. But this wasn't like that. He genuinely would try to steal your personal belongings to find this shit out. He formed a relationship with the aforementioned girl because they had something in common their hatred for yours truly. I got called down to the principal's office one day during class, and the mood was extremely somber when I came in. The principal explained that creepy boy had been texting the girl and telling her he was going to bring a gun to school and kill me. He named the type of weapon, the time, the day, all of it. He wanted her to join in the fun. Apparently the girl took her phone to the principal without responding and volunteered it to him and others very out of character she hates people touching her belongings. Kid went back to juvie, I say back. Because we found out later he had molested young family members. Girl and I aren't super close. But there is a serious respect from me for her for doing what was right even though she didn't like me. People underestimate how those kids can be when presented with a challenge. And to quickly write them off as bad kids. Well. Besides creepy guy. Duck that kid. This happened to a friend of mine. We went to a private high school with a lot of ambassadors kids. Really rich natives, middle class people who wanted to give their kids a good education, or people who were there on scholarship. This meant that there were a lot of cliques, the preppy locals, the poorer kids, the jet setting Europeans, etc. There was a lot of crossovers the rich girls going for the hot scholarship kids. Things like that. In this particular case, my middle class friend let's call him John started dating this rich girl. Her ex let's call him Mike didn't like being dumped for someone below him and would be really rude to my friend. They just passive aggressively hated each other. One day, a Friday night, there was a party for people from my school at some nightclub. Since this was partially organized by the school, everyone went. Other schools were invited, but it was organized by ours, and everyone knew that. My friend John happened to be outside by himself for some reason and got into a fight with a guy from another school. Mike had just gotten there was just about to go into the club with a few of his buddies when he saw this. He stepped in to help John. And all his friends stood up to the guy telling him you mess with one of us. You mess with all of us. The guy backed off. John and Mike never really got along. But there was mutual respect in there somewhere after that. In high school. Nice gal. Red hair. Profoundly attractive. Was in the popular sporty clique. Not really my crowd. Was during sophomore I think. Biology class and I got paired with her for some project. I was incredibly shy and her being profoundly attractive didn't help at all. She wasn't super smart. But had a good work ethic. I had to help explain a lot of the concepts to her a few times. But that was okay with me. Because I did pretty well academically. One of her guy friends was hovering around us. While we were talking about the project in the hallway. And he out of the blue made some comment about my mustache looking like a dirty Sanchez. Before I could even whimper out a reply she said, why the duck are you being such an ass to such a nice person? That moment really stuck with me. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe, 